Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever. Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello podcast land how are you all doing today i am glad you can tune into this week's episode of outside the classroom wednesdays let's give you a round of applause for tuning in today thank you guys for they tuning in but not only that they tune in but you cause them to tune into this week's episode and every week's episode lord because it's not just me but it's everyone that wants to encourage the listeners each and every week so we thank you guys for tuning into this week's episode of outside the classroom wednesdays with my Bible study teacher, Pastor John Kotler. Unfortunately, guys, again, today we are not live because we are getting situated with moving and all this stuff, and I'm getting a little extra hours so I can help with some of the finance stuff for the truck and the men that are going to help. So with that being said, we are not live today, but I am going to try to go live ASAP as soon as I can. And that is a promise. Because I love being live with you guys. I just love being live with you guys. It's nice. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. Recording is fun. We had fun with last week's episode, and that was recorded too, but I like going live. There's something something different about being live, knowing that I could be right there at that exact moment, and somebody could be listening to me, could be listening to whatever life-changing message that God gives to me, or the person who was on the show, like Pastor John or Pastor Lanson or Nissa Travis. So it's nice to know that somebody could be listening to an encouraging word while I'm live on the show. Knowing that I am live, they could possibly call in. There's a lot of different things that can happen. And so it's just, it's a lot different going live than it is recording. But as of today, we are recording this because we are going to get into get into a new house real real soon so with that being said guys we love you and god loves you and guess what there's nothing you can do about it (laughs) let's get into a few but brief announcements starting with number one go to communitycloud222 at gmail.com spelled c-o-m-m-u-n-i-t-y-c-l-o-u-d 222 at g-m-a-i-l dot c-o-m and guess what you can do right there? You can send me all of your prayer requests. Or if you want me to shout to you on the podcast, send me your first name, your city, and your state. And I'll shout out to you on TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, be aware, guys, you can call us at 1-302-448-8443. Again, that's 1-302-448-TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, be aware, we're going to be doing this each and every week outside the classroom Wednesdays, where we think outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Pastor John's messages from Sunday morning Bible study, post those to the show so you guys can enjoy them, and as also so we can take his messages to outside of the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. Also, be aware we'll be doing this each and every week now as well, Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays, where we take Pastor Lance and Ernissa Travis's messages, and we post those to the show as well, so you can enjoy their messages as well, and so we can take and get their messages outside of the classroom as well to those who need the gospel each and every day. Also, be aware, guys, we're going to be starting this real soon, the Rumble, where we'll be shaking the heavens rattling the earth and rumbling against the principalities of darkness and evil. The Bible says that we don't fight or rumble against what? Flesh and blood, but are principalities of darkness and evil. We're going to take one day out of the week, and we're going to fight, 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 pray, 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 rumble, 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 preferably at midnight. Now, why do I say preferably at midnight? Because darkness loves darkness. Let me say that to you again. Darkness loves darkness. When you look at your hand in a dark room, can you see your hand in front of your face? Of course not. Why? Because darkness loves darkness. Darkness collects. And when you turn on a light, some of the darkness is dispelled. Finally, when all the lights are turned on, all darkness is dispelled. The same thing with Jesus. When you display God's light or Jesus' light, darkness is dispelled. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, not at the poof, ta-da, here I am, at the name of Jesus, Demons tremble and Satan flees. Let me say that to you again. It says in his word, at the name of Jesus, 
Not the poof till I hear him at the name of Jesus. Satan flees and demons tremble. So all you got to do when anything comes up after you and it comes to tempt you, you say, Jesus, and it's done. So what are we going to do on the rumble? We're going to take one day out of the week and we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for the listener and we're going to pray for the government and we're going to pray for the president. Whatever pops up, we are going to pray. Four, let's pray for this man in the White House. Lord, we humbly come before you, Lord. We ask you to be with this man in the White House. We ask you to be with him on his every day that when he does what he does, he does it for your glory, for what you want to happen in this in this world, not what he wants to happen. He has to be with him in health and to be with him in finance. And Lord, I ask you to direct and guide him in everything that he does. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. That is the rumble. Also, guys, be aware, we're going to be doing this each and every week. Worship Saturdays, we'll be doing nothing but worshiping God. Just praise, prayer, and worship. Grab your favorite drink. And just relax your lounge chair and enjoy the fabulous music we here have on the show. All we're going to do is just praise, prayer, and worship. That is Worship Saturdays. Also, guys, be aware that you can download Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L, available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. And what can you do on that app? Well, first off, you can listen to this very show. Second, you can make Comments with a free Spreaker.com account. That's S P R E A K E R.com. Again, it's you can make comments with a free Spreaker.com account. That's again S P R E A K E R.com. Also, you can connect with me through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. Let me send you, let me to give you a personal TGIF life hack. So, here's the scenario you want to send an email to TGIF, but you don't want to go. Spelled C O M M U N I T Y C L O U D two 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 at G M A I L dot C O M. Ooh, see how much of a breath it takes to get it out of there? Well, here's what you do download Podcast Portal again, spelled P O D C A S T space P O R T A L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the App Toyed Market. And then you go into Podcast Portal and go to the right hand corner of any page, bottom right hand corner of any page, and click on the little envelope picture it looks like an envelope it's the email button click on there then click on your email client then type in your email and hit send it's that easy but it seems hard at first but then when you go back hit the always button though because when you go back to it again guess what as soon as you click the email button that quick it's that easy sends you straight to the email you type in your email you hit send so it's that easy it's click the email button Type in your email, hit send, you're done. But you got to click that always button. Also, what you can do on podcast portals, you can listen to the play buttons. 95.5 The Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. KJIC out of Texas. My former church, Evangel Christian Churches. And my new church that I attend here in Ravenna, Ohio, Portage Community Chapel. So with Evangel, you just click on their Evangel button. It takes you to their YouTube page. And with Portage Community Chapel now, you click on their uh, Portage their button, and you just t- it takes you right to their Vimeo page. So you can listen and see their videos as well. But you can also move around the screen, and if you're chatting with people on the app, you can do that as well. Also, be aware my favorite part of the app is the portal chat feature, where you can communicate with not just me or the co-host, but everyone who who owns that app. Everyone in the world who owns that app. If 500 people own that app, you can communicate around the world, 500 different people. And that's my favorite part of the app. You can also send pictures. You can also send a picture straight from your phone. But here's what you got to do. You take the picture with your camera. You save it to your phone. You go into portal chat. You then click the camera on the bottom. You select the picture you want to put into the portal chat. And then you hit send. It's that easy. You can't take a selfie with it, but you can take a picture beforehand, and then post that picture into the portal chat feature. Now, we want to get to know who you are a little bit. We want to know a little bit about your day. So show us a little bit about yourself. If you're in France, you want to show us the Eiffel Tower, take a picture of the Eiffel Tower and show us. We'd like to know who you are. Now, we don't want to know every single minute of what you do. There are some people out there 
who who will post I had 25 peas, I chewed them 25 times, I walked 25 feet to the couch, and I sat on the couch. <laughs> That's not what we're trying to do here. We still want to get to know who you are. It goes like this. If I, own, if, I, if I pastor a church, but I know nobody in that church, can I pray for them? Absolutely not. Why? Because I don't know who they are. I don't know how to pray for them, who to pray for, or what. So let us know who you are a little bit. Let us get to know you a little bit so we can get to know who you are, what you need prayer for, and what is going on in your life. Because that is the most beautiful thing we can do is to get to know each and every one of our listeners. Also, what you can do is that portal chat feature. Like I said, it's beautiful, it's awesome, and you're going to enjoy it. I know you will. That is Podcast Portal. Also, guys, one last announcement Tell your Alexa devices, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to, or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices as well. We also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, ask Alexa to open Podcast Portal, and she'll say, welcome to, or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements. There you go, guys. That does conclude our announcements for today. Let's get into the main song of the show. And today's song is We Need by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy, We Need. Just 
want your presence, oh Lord. Fill us up with your presence, oh Lord. There. That, once again, guys, was We Need by None Other Than K. Daniel's Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Let's get into to Pastor John's message for today's episode of Outside the Classroom Wednesdays, The Unity of Jews and Gentiles. Enjoy the unity of Jews and Gentiles. <laughs> All right, Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for the opportunity to learn more of your word this morning. And through John teaching us our Heavenly Father, we thank you for him, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for our, our youth group and our nursery, our Heavenly Father. Look after uh, George as he's dealing with the young people, our Heavenly Father, and uh, guiding them and directing them, our Heavenly Father, and teaching them the Word. Again, our Heavenly Father, uh, we pray for the, the folks that were mentioned this morning, our Heavenly Father, look after them, uh, take care of them, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for uh, the folks in Ukraine, our Heavenly Father, look after them. Let your will be done there, our Heavenly Father. Uh, uh, again, we pray for patience and, and uh, mercy. Our Heavenly Father, uh, again, we thank you for the message we're receiving this morning. Open our hearts and our minds to it. These things we ask in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Come on, please. We're here last night for the Grand Prix. Who? We're here on the for missionaries for Awana. And so they talked about Ukraine. And they said there is numerous Awana clubs going on in secret in Ukraine. They have it at my house one time, then his house, and then your house. They have to do it in secret. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh -huh. I thought they were, I thought they were free country, Ukraine. Why would that be underground? I have no idea, sir. Yeah, they're open. And that, that president, I just found out he was Jewish. Yeah. Yes. But he said they he did secret. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pass around our attendant sheet from last week and let us just sign it on the back so we can say we've done it. All right. There's a big crowd here today. Yeah. Rhonda's here. Okay. World's coming to an end. There are, there are, well, Jesus is ready to come back now. Well, I woke up this morning and I was still hurting, so I figured I wasn't dead. So. Well, if you're hurt, you might as well hurt here, right? At least people will give you some empathy. Yes. All right. So uh, first things first. I got a lot of stuff in my head here. One is. Uh, so next, okay, Bill Rue is starting a class the 13th of March. So we've got this Sunday and next Sunday. And uh, my kids are going to be at uh, a ski lodge up in New York, so I cannot be here next week. So Kelly, I asked her, so we got to decide what you guys want to do. You know, I, I got to see the kids, right? My grandkids, I haven't seen them in a while, so... Mm -hmm. that, that's why I won't be here next week. I was, we were trying to get mm -hmm. one voice to sing next week. We were ready to go, but now I can't do it. So that blew that up. And then a the week after, Steve is Sigworth is not. He can't make it. So we that. So now we're looking at another day. So and then we're we have our concert uh, April nine. So we're gearing up for that. So if you guys, you know Kelly. Well, we've got two choices. Okay. I can either play. John McCarthy video. We can do that and get together, or we can take a break next week. It's what you guys, whatever you guys want to do. What do you mean by take a break? Just not meet next week. Just come for one service and 
better to keep going. All I got to do, I need a stick to poke that. Well, you don't, button. you need two fingers. You got to push two buttons. It. Well, Wait, what? What you, what you, I got to push what? my buttons. You, you got to push, no, a, you gotta push a couple of them. The, the two red ones, there's buttons next. You got to, it's weird. I don't even know. I just keep pushing them until they turn on. Oh, are you serious? We can each hold it one side. And turn I'll just it on. make Paul come up and do it. Yeah. Paul can do That's anything. Great. So the two red buttons are just. Well, there's. Both. Yeah. You kind of hold one and then you hold the big one. Then you push the big one. That's why I. You hold one and then push the big one. Yeah. Right. If that don't work, then hold the big one. You know? <laughs> hey, we'll figure it out. Hey, you know what? You don't have to do a video. You can just. Flat out teach, you know. <laughs> That's a little. You know what? You can do your Bible. You can, you know what? Do what you were doing with your high school kids. Bible Same thing. Just reading and then just stopping and asking questions. Do that. Do that. Just do what you're doing with your school. You know. Keep it simple. We all participate. None of us are Yeah. So you don't have to. You don't have to stay with what I'm doing. You know. We're free agents. <laughs> if you do anything you want to do, want to get your song of prayer on your head. So, uh, yeah, Ukraine's a, a big topic. Uh, I, I, I've been following it, and there are a lot of churches that... Uh, I didn't realize there's so many churches in Ukraine. There's like 3,200 3, of them. I mean, there's a lot of them. And what I found today, and uh, and I'm... I know a lot of you guys are. I'm personally a supporter of Samaritan's Purse, yes. and they are also going over there. You know, those guys have their own like cargo plane that they fly in, and they got a, a hospital set up that they're flying in like any time here to get in there and set up. You know, so they're, they're this this is not going away soon, and it. It's it's bad, but the thing is, is the difference. So the reason it interests me so much because you know my parents came from that kind of stuff. The difference is, Ukraine has a military. You know they're outgunned and outnumbered, but they are armed. You know I mean, whereas these other little countries never had a chance. I mean, like for instance in Hungary. Um, see after World War Two, you know every, everything else got you know, cut up again, right? Well, the commu- they went from Nazi rule to communist rule, Hungary. And it was, you know, so from 45 to 56, they're under communist rule, as well as Czechoslovakia and Poland and the rest of them, all those countries. So um, I don't know what triggered the revolution in Hungary, but... They they had nothing to fight with. So I mean, all they had was some Molotov cocktails, cocktails, Molotov cocktails, and maybe some guns that you know somehow they got. Well, the Soviets were already in the country, so they went in and squashed it pretty fast. Well, that was the opportunity for a lot of people to leave, and my parents were one of them. They got on a train and went as far west as they could and walked the rest. And once you got into Austria, then the Americans were helping. That's how all these people came out of there. Okay, so that's my parents' story in a quick you know, synopsis. But they couldn't stand up to the Soviet Union, right? And uh, whereas Ukraine, they have their own military. You know, they have jets. They got, they're nothing like what Russia has, but they can hold their own. And the difference too is they have they have the spirit of wanting to fight back. They have skin in the game. I mean, this is their country. They got you got older people. I mean, there are people our age that are willing to take up arms, and they're handing out weapons as we speak. You know, 
bullets and everything, and the, like they were interviewing a 76-year-old lady, 74, and she goes, you know, I want to save the life of a younger one, and I'll fight for him, you know, and they want to, and they're, and all the men from 16 to, no, 18 to 60 have to, they're like being constricted, right? I'm, I'd be too old to fight for them. So, uh, I would do it. I know, you, can, you got enough spunk. I'd hide under some place. Yeah. And so, so there's a, what? That's right. Feeling as old as you feel. That's right. So, you know, how hard is it to pull a trigger? It's, uh, <laughs> it's the tinnitus that I can't do, can't handle a gunfire. I had, yeah, it's bad for me. So, uh, you know, you got all that going on over there. But, you know, the cool thing was I was talking to my manager. You want to pray for this guy. You know, a bunch, all the guys I work with were at the funeral, okay? And they really saw a spirit in our church and our faith and what we believe in. And it really struck with these guys, right? And it really hit my manager. He's only 35 years old. His name is Damien, same, same uh, name as my uh, son, grandson, yeah, D-A-M-I-A-N. And I was talking to him the other day, and he was, he's an ex-Marine, and uh, he's all upset about all this. He said, I couldn't even sleep last night, and we are, like, together, and, you know, the mindset and the thinking, all that. But he was really worried about Israel, because... You know, he's afraid they're going to get attacked. And, and I so wanted to get the opportunity. To, he doesn't know prophecy at all. And I had a manager years ago talk to me about the same thing. And I had to tell him, I said, I can assure you biblically that nobody's going to nuke Israel. God will not allow that to happen. They are supernaturally protected. And uh, so I need to talk to him sometime offline we call it and talk to him about how this all this stuff works the scary thing is you're you're almost seeing prophecy right in front of our eyes because you know all it would take is a rapture of the church and some entity the antichrist come to power in europe trying to get peace i mean this is like ripe for that but it's also very similar to what happened in World War One. Remember what triggered it is the uh, what was that? Archduke. It was, the Archduke. Yeah, he was assassinated mm-hmm. in the, out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and uh, that's what triggered this World War. Well, people are afraid of World War Three with this because this can easily escalate. And Putin has already said his goal. He wants all, even though you're NATO. You know, and there's this uh, agreement that if you hit one, you hit them all, including us, that we have to come to that defense. So he wants certain countries before a certain year all come back. He wants the Soviet bloc back. Mm -hmm. He wants the Iron Curtain back. Mm -hmm. There's no way around this. But Mm -hmm. he is meeting serious resistance here. So there's a lot to pray about, you know. I mean, there's a lot here. And so, and it can easily go, and I, you know, I personally have skin in the game, you know. I don't know if they're going to deploy our guys, you know, you know, and I have a daughter-in-law who can end up, you know, she's a medic, so there's, you know, that going on. There's, I got two family members that can easily get involved with this, so there's a lot of, uh, just think, just when you thought there would be peace, there isn't. And the thing that you realize is uh, man is not basically good, you know. There was no reason for Putin to invade this country, none. There is no, it's, it, in a, and if you boil him down, it comes down to pride, you know. He wants power and control and, you know. Who's steering that? Anybody but Satan? Yeah. Pray for Putin. Yeah. I, you know, and you know, his name is Mud now. You know, he went from being semi-respected. You know, honestly, I kind of respected the guy until this happened. You know, so now his name is Mud. You know, 
You know where that term came from? That it's, it's a man named Mud, right? Yeah. But I can't remember yeah, the first rest of the story. All right, so here's the story on that. Because we always say that. His name is Mud, right? Okay, well, here's the story. So when Lincoln was assassinated, okay, uh, Booth went off and, you know, trying to escape through swamps. He had a broken leg, right? But he's trying to get through. Well, he ended up at some doctor's farm and needed help. And, you know, they didn't have the internet back then. They didn't have radio. They didn't have TV. They didn't have, you know, nobody knew from nothing, okay? And so this doctor who attended him and bandaged him up so he could leave, well, his name was Dr. Mudd. <laughs> and so he got a bad reputation for helping an assassin that he himself had no way of knowing. And so he spent the rest of his life trying to clear his name. And so to this day, when people say, well, his name is Mud, that's the reason. It's not because of dirt that's wet. It's because of this doctor's name. So this goes back to 1865. <laughs> Which just kind of proves something that, as you said, he knew nothing about it. He was only doing what his Hippocratic Oath told him to do and helping somebody. Right. But we all have a tendency to jump to conclusions before we know a whole story. Right. Yes, we do. But you know, John, um, I don't think Satan is using Putin. I think God is using Putin to bring about, I mean, he's in control. Yeah. And all these things are going to come to pass. I mean, strange things are going to happen in Europe. Right. And, uh, well, the thing we got to remember is, you know, like Flip Wilson used to always say, the devil made me do it. That was part of his shtick back, you guys remember? Well, that's not necessarily true because, yeah, Satan does try to orchestrate, and there's no doubt that, you know, we're under control of, you know, the prince and powers of the air, right? But we're also carried away mostly by our own devices, by our own sins. You know, pride and, you know, what's the three? Greed. No, it's the other. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Exactly. That is what's in our nature. And that is what carries us through. And that, that's, and if you, those three are in Putin's personality, just like it is in every one of us. The only reason why we don't do that is because we have the Spirit of God in us. You know, that's, yeah, that's the difference between a believer and a non believer. And the bottom line is. Exactly. We cannot blame somebody else for what we do. Right. You also remember, too, the Bible says you hear of wars and rumors of wars, but take heart that this must happen before I return. Right. I, that verse also has been running through my mind all week, too. Jesus said this would happen. This is part of the human experience. And this stuff was happening in 1940, you know, 39, 40, when all this, you know, it's different. You know, it's not quite. We're not dealing with the Nazis here. They, 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 they interviewed a grandmother that came over during World War II, and she said now she's seeing her grandchildren over there in the same mm-hmm. situation. Yeah. yeah. History does repeat itself. Mm-hmm. And if you look at Israel, it repeated for them continually. And they brought it upon themselves. Yeah. All, they, all the Lord wanted was obedience. They would be good for a while. Then they would kind of have this slow decline, sin, back to ground zero, and then, you know, and it would repeat over and over. The other thing is the scripture uh, talks so much about all these different kings. You know, he did right in the sight of God. He did evil in the sight of God. You know, and most of it was evil, you know. There was just a few kings that did the right thing. Most of mankind does not do well, you know. And it, it's the heart of man, it's the sin that we deal with. So when you say the end of time, you know, I've been thinking all week too about that. You know, a lot of churches don't really preach on that anymore. They're asleep. Yeah. Well anyway, 
I didn't want to get on that railroad track. But anyway, um, I've been thinking, okay, you know, it's like all the nations go come up against, um, in the end of time, America and um, Israel, you know? So I'm like, I, have, I was talking to my mom, and she's like, yeah, she goes, that very well could be, this could be the start of that, you know, because, you know. I'm glad you wrapped that up, because there's another thing I missed. Prophetically, there are two major countries that are in the end times. Who are they? Russia. Well, Russia and China. So, America is not mentioned. So I hate to tell you, but we could, it, we could get nuked prophetically because the United States is not involved at all. And I've thought this way back. But the sad part is, and we're seeing this ourselves, we're actually falling apart from inside. We're not being attacked because we're kind of, you know, we're between two huge people, bodies of water, but we're actually disintegrating from internally. I mean, we're literally falling apart slowly. I was told, uh, I was watching something today, and they go, you know, there's only two ways of going bankrupt. It's gradually and immediately. If you think about it, it's true, you know. There's two ways to go bankrupt, slowly or right now. And this is like uh, we're just literally disintegrating internally. We're like we're killing ourselves. We're, we're seeing all this woke mentality, cancel culture. You know, this Supreme Court justice is one of them, you know. I mean, it's just, it's, to me, I can't help but think, okay, so I'm being elected to this office because of my color. There's no other way around it. It has nothing. You might be qualified. That's fine. But the fact that, but the fact that you're in there because of your skin color, we've come down to that. Affirmative action huh? and your gender. Yeah, that. And affirmative action. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, <laughs> I'm in trouble here. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. That woman, she deserves the job. I mean, she has got all the qualifications. But a lot of the rulings that she was involved with, they were rejected further up. They were like, "What are you know? Yeah. You're completely unconstitutional." You're the left people overturned things that she right. So well, they don't think she's going to be passed in us. The they Congress. don't. No. Well, I would think she would because yeah. if not, you're racist. <laughs> if yeah. We go no, back to that. But because of her rulings in the past, right? That she's far, far left. And right. they said they don't believe there's any way that she would be approved. I heard that on the news. Yeah, we all know. Well, you know what? She's like a woman. Yeah. Well, you never know. Yeah, so, uh, today is the 27th. So, we're in Proverbs 27. I'm going to read through this. You know, there's comfort in the Word of God. And, uh, you know, everything else can be falling apart on us, but... Uh, it's just, these words are good for the soul. All right, Proverbs 27. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. How about that one? <laughs> Let another praise you and not your own mouth. Now this is one I have struggled with, you know. Because you know there, you know you always you're looking for compliments or fishing for compliments, and, and you read this and you're like, you know what? It's better to keep your mouth shut and let somebody else. It says here, let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. How true that is. A stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but the provocation of a fool is heavier than both of them. You know, the, the Bible does not have much good to say about fools. It says, talks about them an awful lot. The goal is not to be one. <laughs> Wrath is fierce, and anger is a flood. But who can stand before jealousy? You know, we're seeing that in this, these wars, you know. It's, you know, jealousy is a big 
reason for wars too. Better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. A sated man loathes honey, but to a famished man any bitter thing is sweet. Like a bird that wanders from her nest, so is a man who wanders from his home. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, so a man's counsel is sweet to his friend. Do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend, and do not go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother far away. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad that I may reply to him who reproaches me. A prudent man sees evil and hides himself. The naive proceed and pay the penalty. Take his garment when he becomes surety for a stranger, and for an adulterous woman hold him in pledge. He who blesses his friend with a loud voice early in the morning, it will be reckoned a curse to him. A constant dripping on a day of steady rain and a contentious woman are alike. He would restrain her, restrains the wind, and grasps oil with his right hand. I don't know any women like that. I'm glad I wasn't married to one, I'll tell you that. Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. He who tends the fig tree will eat its fruit, and he who cares for his master will be honored. As in water, face reflects face, so the heart of man reflects man. Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied, nor are the eyes of man ever satisfied. So is, isn't that true? You cannot satisfy the, hum, the, the eye. I mean, you get it in the mail all the time, the advertisements. I remember, I don't seem to have that much of a problem today as I did. The worst thing that could ever come to my house was a magazine or an advertisement or something. Because one minute, I had no need for anything. <laughs> and the next minute, I'm like, I could use this. Yeah, you know? really. and, and window shopping is like the worst thing you could do. You know, It's like, you know what? If you don't go, you don't miss it. That's why I don't go to thrift stores when I have money. I find everything I want. Yeah. I, it's better just to, you know, and then you you walk through, you know, while well, you go to Cracker Barrel, every tool is nailed up on the ceiling <laughs> and on the wall. And, you know, people paid money for that. Those were the tools of the day. Mm-hmm. And you see all the old advertising, you know, it's, mm-hmm. you know, it, nothing's changed, mm-hmm. you know. You know, you see a sled nailed up on the wall and, you, and some kid... 80 years ago, yeah. said, i got to have that. Mm-hmm. It's too bad he didn't see a snowmobile, because then that's what he would have wanted, you know? Yeah, so, so true. The crucible is for silver and the furnace for gold, and each is tested by the praise accorded him. Boy, isn't that true? You know, some people can handle praise, and, and Lot cannot. Though you pound a, I always find this to be kind of humorous. Though you pound a fool in a mortar with a pestle along with crushed grain, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. Do you know what that image to me is? Is of a pharmacist. I think of that. You know, you have a bowl, and you know how they mix their ingredients. So. In my mind, I would think that's a, a mortar and a pestle along with crushed grain, and they're like grinding them, you know, like the pharmacist would do. Yet it's, you can do that, and yet that foolishness will not depart from him. You know, it's no matter what you do, you can't grind it out of them. You know, it's like it's innate in their system. Know well the condition of your flocks, and pay attention to your herds, for riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. You know, they were advertising, this was kind of interesting, you know, you spend your whole life saving, right? 
saving your money so you have something so you can retire. But nobody thinks about, well, how do I keep that so I don't lose that money as I get older because you're no longer working. You've got to make your money work for you. Well, that's what this is. And he says, know well the condition of your flocks and pay attention to your herds, for riches are not forever. So, you know, nor does a crown endure to all generations. And it's, this kind of dovetails with Ecclesiastes, you know, nothing's forever. You know, we can try all we want, but eventually we all end up in the grave. That's what we're going. The only thing that we get to keep is what we give, because that God keeps you know, the records. He knows what we're doing. He knows what motivates what's in our heart. And it's okay to, you know, collect and save and all that, but we have to be able to give it. And here's an opportunity, you know, to give the Samaritan's Purse to help those clearly in need. I mean, I plan on doing that. When the grass disappears, the new growth is seen, and the herbs of the mountains are gathered in. The lambs will be for your clothing, and the goats will bring the price of a field, and there will be goat's milk enough for your food, for the food of your household, and sustenance for your maidens. You know, in that time, you know, there it's an agricultural, that's how people lived. Even in this country, for the most of, majority of our country's existence, it's been agricultural. Um, the whole concept of living you know, out of a factory and all that, that's relatively new. Most people lived this. You know, you had, they were farmers. They had little pieces of land and they just worked it. So good uh, advice for everybody, no matter what you're doing. So what I'm trying to do is uh, finish up on chapter 2 and, and pretty much address chapter 3 of Ephesians, and uh, I want to correct something I said last week that I wasn't quite right on. Let me do one thing here. So last week I said, okay, I'll just read it, in chapter 2, I'll start in uh, verse 14, Ephesians 2, 14. For he himself is our peace. That, you know, is referring to Jesus himself. Who made both groups, this is the Jew and the Gentile, into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. And I refer to the temple with, you know, the Gentiles being out by abolishing in his flesh the enmity. And I refer to enmity as sin. Well, that's not true. Huh? It's anger. Well, not in this case. Um, what? Because it, it actually answers what the enmity is in the second half of this verse. verse. It says, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances... <clears throat> so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. So what we got to understand is, you know, what separated the Jew and the Gentile, see the Jew, not only did they have the commandments, okay, the Ten Commandments to begin with, but then the Pharisees and the rabbis threw upon them more things. Well, a lot of it, it came from the Lord. You know, they, he, you know, he instituted all these ordinances, ceremonial rituals, all this stuff. And then the Pharisees and them made it even worse. They made up their own on top of it. So this became a system that was a complete departure from everything God really wanted. All he was trying to do, he was trying to instill a discipline in them, but he was also trying to instill a sense that you can never work your way to me. Because it's, it's works, which you can never be right with me by you know, tempering yourself and, and trying to purify yourself through all these ceremonies and rituals and stuff. It doesn't work. Well, the Gentiles, they didn't operate in that way at all. 
you know, they were literally pagan, okay? So they worshipped their own idols, they did all this stuff. And so when you, they saw what the Jews were doing, there was no way the Jew could really win. The, the goal, from the Lord's point of view, was not just to keep it all to themselves, but he wanted the Jew to be a, an example and to, his goal all along was to build the church. He wanted the Gentiles to repent. That's God's big plan, which the Jews never saw. They could never get past their own sins, much less reach the lost. To me, Jonah is a perfect example of it. I mean, he, you know, we talked about before, he just, uh, he went out in spite, you know, he didn't go out with the, the heart of God. You know, he went out, so, okay, you know, he didn't want to do it first, and God had to made him, you know. It's a completely different picture than what Paul was. Paul was like Christ when, when you look at how he operated. That's how God, that's God's heart, how Paul worked in his heart. And you know, we're going to see some things to show that. So this enmity was this enmity between these two groups of people, the Jews and the Gentiles. So that's why the miracle of the gospel can break through these barriers and the goal was to bring these two people groups together but only from a safe point of view you know you know i you know i i was bringing up uh, last week or two how you know god is working to get the you know so many of the jews back to israel I didn't realize till Patty brought up, and I think somebody else I heard too that the president of the Ukraine is Jewish. There's a huge Jewish population there. There's synagogues all over the place. They're hiding in the basements as we speak. You know, they're. But you know, this could be what God's using to force them out, and uh, you know, God, you know. I work on a lot of equipment, and when you open them up, there's a lot of lot going on in a printer. Okay, there's gears everywhere, and I don't even understand half of what's going on in there. You know, because we go by error codes, and you, we're kind of taking guesses. But when you look, there's this cog, this clutch, another gear, and they all mesh, and we have no idea how this whole thing works unless you really study it. Well, it's the same thing here. God knows every gear, every clutch. He's not surprised by any of it. He knows how this is supposed to work from beginning to end. We may not see it, but he does. He knows how all things work together, you know. And that's how this is. You know, God is working this plan from the beginning of time. And this is what Paul's in the middle of it, writing about it, to get everybody to see what God has been trying to do. And I'm not even sure the prophets and people like that even knew themselves what God's plan was. They were just obeying God. You know, they did they did, you know, they were living as they were writing. They didn't know what God's plan was. If you look at all the stories that we left to you know, we got Daniel and Joseph and Abraham and all these different people, you know, we see how they're living in you know, they had no. They could have been killed just quick. I mean, when Daniel got into the lions, then do you think he really knew God was going to save him? He could have thought, "Well, this is it." You know, he didn't know how that God was going to work this. They were walking by faith. You know, it's easy to see things. Okay, Esther is another one. She's the one who uh, took that chance to talk before the king. She didn't know how this was going to end. Because no other woman would even dare what she did. She took a huge chance. She didn't. She could have ended up on the gallows, right? I mean, there's a lot of... These people didn't know. And Paul, here, he's living by faith. Because he's got the Pharisees, they're breathing down in his neck, and they want him as dead as they wanted Christ dead. So Paul was living the same thing. He knew that... He knew the hammer was coming down on him sooner or later. He knew he was destined to die. The difference was Paul didn't know when. Jesus knew the exact time that it was going to come down on him. 
That's why I was so hard on Christ, because every day he lived, he knew, he knew the date and time. None of us know, do we? We just know it's coming. Paul knew it was coming, because even when he was writing this, he was a prisoner. Okay, he had, he's already been five years in prison. Three of them was in Rome. Two of them was in from uh, Caesarea. So, you know, he's writing all this from prison. He knows it's coming. He just doesn't know when. So, so that's what his focus here is, is to make the two into one man, just establishing peace. That's what the world always wants, is peace. And the longing then is the same as it is, and it might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross. See, the cross is where, you know, everybody's even at the foot of the cross. Jesus died for our sins. He made justification so we can be righteous before God at the cross. The Jew, with all their ceremony and all their rituals and everything, comes to the foot of the cross, just like the Gentiles come with all their idol worship and you know, everything they bring, okay? None of us bring anything to the table. We're all equal sinners. And Paul was saying that all this, no matter what your background, it doesn't matter. I might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by it having put to death the enmity, which is all these, that's what divided the Jew and the Gentile, is all these rituals and ordinances and all this stuff. That's what this enmity was. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. He is Christ. So he, that's what he's talking about here. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to this Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Apparently in the ancient world, you know, we build things with uh, footers. You know, we lay down a footer and, you know, we build block and everything all kind of comes up together. Well, apparently in the ancient world, they use a cornerstone. So when they planted this heavy, huge cornerstone, it anchored and set the coordinates for the entire building. Well, Jesus is that cornerstone. Everything is based off of him. You know, he didn't, you know, I mean, if you want to put it into our um, current building, you know, we have this footer. Well, you can say Christ is that footer. Everything, if that's not right, nothing is right. So... He is that cornerstone. It's about 23 uh, after. Okay. I didn't even get into chapter 3. <laughs> you know, you get on a roll. You know, what can I say? All right, so it says here in verse 21, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord. So we have, you know, our hope and trust as we know that Christ is our hope. He's our cornerstone. He's the one everything is coming off of. In whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. So Paul is painting a beautiful picture of what unity is supposed to look like. You know, it's based on Christ, built based on his cornerstone, and we are just part of that building. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, and this is a totally foreign concept of what the Jew, Jew thought, you know, um, they were it, you know. The Gentiles are out there, they're, they're easy to hate, they're easy to, they're ugly, they're, they're what they are. I mean, obviously, they would never let a Jewish girl marry a Gentile guy. Well, you figure if these are two and a one, well, man, now you're starting to intermarry, if you think about it. You know, you got Gentile, saved Gentile boy or girl marrying a Jew. It's a whole different way of thinking here. So, 
you know, that's how I see it. So, I'm going to, didn't even get to my notes. <laughs> Not, nothing. I, I mean, I thought, this morning I thought, I'm in trouble. I'm just not going to get, and here I am, out of time. So far, there's always another day. <laughs> well, I was talking to Barry the other day, and he says, you know, we, how much time we got? Five minutes. Oh, yeah. You know, I think, I think we're going to do is uh, take this, we're going to have a, I'm going to stick a thing real quick. I think we're going to have a mini prayer meeting here for Ukraine. Is what we're going to do the last few minutes, since even the governor says we should lift up Ukraine. But what I was going to say is, Barry says uh, the Bible is inexhaustible. You'll never run out of things to talk about. That's what we were talking the other day. So let's have a few people praying. And John Roberts close us when we're we have that pause. For the people that's um, hiding down in the subway spot, the children who's scared to death, I pray for your presence to be them and help them to reach out to you, help them to know that you're a God that's in, in control and be with that nation of love. Dear Heavenly Father, I just, it's been on my mind for a month, and I just didn't know it that uh, those people. I just pray that um, I second uh, her emotion, and I just pray for um, additionally that there will be a lot of people that will be able to witness to those that are lost and absolutely need uh, to see your power and and come to know you as the Lord and Savior and the Almighty Person that you are, and Creator. And I just pray for their, uh, for that utmost, and and that uh, you would honor and and uh, your name be glorified through this. Lord, we pray for Samaritans First and other organizations, Christian organizations who are coming to your aid, Lord, give them uh, safety <coughs> and uh, wisdom as to where to go and what to do. And Father, please, will you be with the Ukrainian? military. Shore them up, Father, as only you can. And Father in heaven, be with all of the thousands and thousands of refugees. Help them find food and shelter, Father. Help the families that had to leave so many loved ones behind and help those loved ones to be strong. And give them peace, God, let them know that they're not the only ones out there that you were with them. You will always be with them. Father, we do not know, we do not understand all that's going on, but we know you do. So our faith and our trust is in you. And there are many Christians in Ukraine, and I know they're praying, and they don't know the outcome, and like the scripture says, like John has said in our, in our class today, we don't know the outcome. But you're in control, and uh, we trust you for everything. And you would think it'd be our turn for all this uh, stuff that's going on. But we have our own problems. They're different. They're, they may be worse, they may be better. I'm not sure. But our country is sinful, crazy. And uh, well, we'd like to see it straightened out. And we can't depend on the government to do it. Only we got to trust you and ask you to help this country if that's what we want. And we just pray for Ukraine. It is sad. It looks sad that the Russian man is in control, how he's destroying a beautiful place. But we know you know all about that. We just have to trust you and what the outcome may be is up to you. In your name I pray.
There you go, guys. That was Pastor John's message for this week's episode of Outside the Class from Wednesdays. Let's get into some more praise and worship with our first song on the list. Sweet Salvation Blues by none other than my friend and guest, the Light Warrior. Enjoy Sweet Salvation Blues.
was Sweet Salvation Blues by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Let's get into our next song, which is Mansion's Melody by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. Enjoy Mansion's Melody.
That once again, guys, was Mansion's Melody by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. Let's get into two more songs. We'll do one. We'll pray that we'll do the last song. We'll end the show that way. Let's get into Clean, Clean Heart by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Enjoy Clean, Clean Heart. Once again, guys, was clean, clean heart by none other than Dudley Smith. Let's pray. Lord, we humbly come back before you again. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to be with us as we depart. And we thank you, Lord, for being with us as we enjoyed this show today, Lord. I ask, Lord, to bless everyone to sound my voice that not be what selfish. Not one of those. I have to have it just because I have to have it. Whether I need it to do something to get to point A, get to point B, if it's a car, to whatever it is you need, Lord, whatever it is they need, Lord, you give them their heart's desire as long as not be what? Selfish. I ask, Lord, to bless them and to heal them 
From the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer or diabetes like I have. Muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal my mom's arm, her arm that's not frozen no more. Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that's not bad no more. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from disease they contracted themselves. HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, kind of or herpes, why? Because when you heal them, it shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. And it shows them, Lord, that you're real. I remind them of a scripture that says you passed, you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door. It says you passed through the door because you're all spirit at that moment. You said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger in my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? God his knees and said, truly, you are the son of God. And what did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But it doesn't stop there. It says, blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say they won't have to say I have to see it to believe because if they if you did it then you'll do it again. If you did it for them, you'll do it again. And they'll say, I've seen it before, and he'll do it again. And I'm reminded of another scripture, Lord says you're the same yesterday. No, it says you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Lord, show them now. So when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have, they won't have to say I have to see it to believe it. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen, 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 amen. Let's get into Open the Eyes of My Heart by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy Open the Eyes of My Heart.
We want to see you, Lord, high and lifted up in this house, Lord. Hallelujah, we want to see you lifted up. We want to see you lifted up in this house, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That once again, guys, was open the eyes of my heart, Lord, by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Let's remind you of two different things. Number one, download that app. It's phenomenal. Available on Google Play Store, the Apple, the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. Download that app. You can do all those wonderful and phenomenal things. Also, ask your Alexa device to open Podcast Portal. Say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. She'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show straight off your Alexa and video Alexa devices as well. With that being said, guys, thank you again for tuning into this week's episode of Outside the Classroom Wednesdays. With that being said, this is TGIF reminding you to one, trust the Lord in your ways, two, lead not to your own understandings, and three, in your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Thank you and good night. <laughs>